Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this exercise, we're going to find the volume of the largest right circular cone that can be inscribed in a sphere of radius 3. And we're given a diagram. And the first thing we want to do in an optimization problem is to identify the quantity that's either being maximized or minimized. In this case, we are maximizing the volume because they're asking us to find the volume of the largest right circular cone. This gives us our primary equation. We need to write the volume of a right circular cone, which is one-third the area of the base times the height. In the case of a cone, the base of the cone is a circle. So instead of capital B for area of the base, I'm going to write pi r squared, which is the area of that circle. Once you have your primary equation, you have to use other information in the problem to rewrite that equation as a function in one variable. So in our diagram, what would be the radius of the base? The radius of the base would be this value that we've labeled as x. And the height of the cone is referring to this perpendicular height in the center which is y plus 3. So we, ha we can replace in our volume formula, we can replace the r with x and the h with y plus 3. So we have volume equals 1 third pi x squared times y plus 3. Okay, but this is not um, done yet because we need a function of one variable. So we're either going to write this as v of x, or we're going to write it as v of y. In either case, we need to be able to write one of the variables in terms of the other. This is where our secondary equation comes in. In this case, we can observe that the relationship between x and y is given by the Pythagorean theorem. The secondary equation is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That enables us to relate x to y, giving us x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared. So we can either solve for x and write it in terms of y, as I've done on the left, or we can solve for y and write it in terms of x. Now which one you decide to do is up to you, but let's observe that if we solve for y in terms of x, in order to get a volume function in terms of x, we would replace y with square root of y minus x squared. On the other hand, if we write x in terms of y, we would replace the x with square root of 9 minus y squared. Which formula, which function looks easier to work with? Remember, to optimize a function, we need to find its derivative and set it equal to 0 or undefined to get the critical values. And I notice that the function on the left is going to have a pretty complicated product rule. Whereas the function on the right will simplify, we'll have v of y equals 1 third pi times 9 minus y squared times y plus 3, which is just a polynomial with a coefficient of 1 third pi. So it's going to be a lot easier to work with. So I would probably go ahead and use this version. However, it'll work out either way. All right, so let's go ahead then and find the derivative of v of y. I decided to leave it factored out and go ahead and use the product rule to find the first derivative. So I was thinking of 1 third pi times 9 minus y squared as the first function and y plus 3 as the second. The derivative of the function v would be the first function f times the derivative of the second, which is just 1, plus the second function s times the derivative of the first, which is 1 third pi times negative 2y. Now that we have a formula for the derivative, I'm going to simplify it. You could distribute and combine like terms, but I noticed that uh, 9 minus y squared has a factor of 3 plus y and a factor of 3 minus y and that we have a factor of y plus 3 in this other term. So I went ahead and factored out 3 plus y and 1 third and pi 
And what was left behind was, in the first term, the 3 minus y, and in the second term, negative 2y. The nice thing about factoring out that common factor is then you have a factored form immediately. So that makes it easier to solve for where the function is equal to zero. So we're gonna have 1 third pi times 3 plus y times 3 minus 3y. And I went ahead and distributed that 1 third through the 3 minus 3y because I noticed that it would cancel out the threes. So that leaves us with pi times 3 plus y times 1 minus y. So we need the critical values, which is where the function is zero or undefined. This function is not gonna be undefined. So setting the derivative v prime of y equal to zero to find the critical values, we will have that either pi is equal to zero, which is false, or three plus y is equal to zero, which would mean y is negative three, which that's not a reasonable answer for the context of the problem, or one minus y equals zero, which would mean y is equal to one. So we really only have one potential critical value to be our maximum. Now let's apply the second derivative test for extrema just to confirm that that is a max. So I'm going to rewrite my first derivative by multiplying out 3 plus y times 1 minus y, which gives me 3 minus 2y minus y squared times pi. And then I'm going to take the, der so the derivative of the derivative, so the second derivative, which gives me pi times negative 2y minus 2. And I'm going to plug in y equals 1 just to confirm that we get a max. And so how do we know? Well, if we plug it in and we get a negative, then we have a max. And that's exactly what happens. We would get negative 4 pi. So that's less than zero, so we have a max at y equals one. So the question asked us to find the maximum volume. So plugging into that function, a one, we get 32 pi over three. And we weren't actually given units, so we would just say cubic units. Volume is always measured in cubic units. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.